All right, I'm going to show you right now. Now, my business plan, all right, I, I did a session on this already about a week ago on the Tuesday webcast. So um, we're not going to go through like the whole business plan in this conference, but I want you to understand how to use it. And then I'm going to show you the simplest business planning process that I've ever learned. And it came from this man right here on the screen, Gary Keller. All right. It's called GPS. But first, get your business plan out. Your simple dimple business plan. What's that? No, this is not two. This is Gary Keller GPS. All right. Now, I want to just run through that and make sure you guys understand how to fill this out. The first, the first step is what? Your overall vision, the picture for your business. Second step is assessment. Here's where I'm at. Third is the SWOT analysis, right? So you want to go through that. And if you have a team, go th through that with the team, right? So when you go through the SWOT analysis, um, our strengths are, hey, revenue's good. We've grown by 500%. I don't know what the percentage for Don's going to be at this point in time. We're debt free. You know, all those kinds of things. Weaknesses, hey, we don't have this position in place, right? Something like that. Maybe you have debt or you're not at KFP. That's a weakness. Opportunities, new initiatives, new services, new marketing uh, processes. Um, and then threats. What are some of the threats to the success of your business? You need to list those out. What's the next step on there? The P&L? Profit and loss? Sales. Yeah, the financial? Okay. Okay. So if you do not, if you're not at KFP, a known financial position, and you don't know if you're making profit or you know that you're not making profit, that has to be your first priority. It has to be your first priority because what that's going to do is that's going to drive you to the marketing and the sales to generate more sales. Next is your MVP. And at lunch, we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, do some round tables on the MVP. You guys are going to share your MVP and you're going to pick up stories and, and, and you're going to pick up what other people are doing and you're going to work on this together at lunchtime today. And then we're going to give away some more prizes. We're going to hear some of your MVP. So you should be able to, as the leader of your company, you should know your numbers and you should know how to take that P&L and start from the bottom. It's called Profit First. You can even flip it if you want to. AC and Karen, they used uh, Profit First. We had Mike McCallowitz here. The other thing that we're going to do in Inner Circle, um, we've gotten really organized at Inner Circle where we are building a new Inner Circle website that's not only more functional and easier and simpler, it looks nicer. And... Um, and then the other thing is, is that, um, is that we're going to start feeding you some of our past conferences because we've got such amazing materials and it's hard to find sometimes because it's embedded in that inner circle site, but we're going to be sending out emails where you'll get a video from Mike McCallowitz and people like that. The guy that wrote profit first, John Maxwell, Michael Gerber, Darren Hardy, those those people on a fairly regular basis. And I'd recommend that if you have a team, play those for your team members because it will inspire them. You guys uh, own this stuff already. And, you know, some of it is 777 only. But listen, we want you to be successful. We want to give you we want to do a better job this year of leading you, not just giving you more information. Right. So part of your vision is, you know, how much money are we going to make? We got to be at KFP. We got to do what Ellen says and every week be looking at that P&L. OK, then we got to understand our MVP so that we can share that with our team, with our clients. We understand, 
you know, what we're trying to accomplish, why we're doing it, who we are, and all those kinds of things. What's the next one? The org chart? Okay. Org chart. Listen, we have a session on each and every one of these uh, tools. These are tools. Your PL is a tool. Your MVP is a tool. Your org chart is a tool. So I have a whole session just on the org chart, and I don't know if you've noticed, but we've done five, uh, we've done five uh, trainings on Tuesdays so far this year, GPS one, two, three, four, and five. Ellen did number five on the PL on the numbers, and uh, you're gonna have eight modules on this Simple Devil Business Plan where all those tools are there. So just think about, Think about it this way. These are tools in the tool chest. What are you building? And these are simply tools that will help you to get there. So you need to understand how to learn them. So I have a whole module on the org chart, how it works, uh, what the different roles are so it makes it clearer. Now, once you understand how to use these tools, when you understand how to fly the airplane, it's real simple. I can... Think about my MVP just like that. I can, do a, uh, I can do my budget on a piece of notebook paper. I know the five numbers. Here's how much profit I want to make. I've, I'm at KFP, so I know what my overhead is. I add those two numbers together. That gives me my gross profit. And then I can look at, over time, what the percentage of cost of sale is. Now, you, you got to do a lot of work ahead of time to get to that point where you know your numbers are right. That's what Ellen shows us how to do. And then you can come up with your sales number. You wanna make a million dollars a year profit? Just look at the numbers and then do what Don did and put a period after it and say, you know what? I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but that's what I want. What does Gary Keller say? Success is getting what you want, but know why you want it. How does it apply to your purpose? How does it apply to your life? And, and get it right here. Because when you get it in your mind, and when it's a dream, and there's some emotion tied to it, you're going to do the hard work to get it done. So understand how to use these tools. And then I think after that, we've got PRDs, which Mr. Rick Jones is going to do a session on. We have those sessions on the Inner Circle website, but he's going to do another session with you today. You're going to go through a PRD exercise, so you'll know how to do, use that tool. It's a tool on the tool belt. Okay? Listen, if I try to build something right now, I mean, if I tried to use a hammer... I guarantee you I'll hit my thumb more than I'll hit the nail, okay? I mean, I'm just not wired that way, all right? But when it comes to these business tools, the more you use them, the more you understand how they work, the better you'll get. And then after that, what do you have, a marketing plan? All right, so this afternoon... I'm going to do a session called Advanced Referral Marketing. Here's the next thing that's going to happen in Inner Circle. We haven't talked enough about referral marketing in the Inner Circle. The marketing modules that I have on there right now is the seven M's of marketing, and there are several methods that we go through. There's like, you know, two modules on referral marketing. It's not enough. Aliki has a whole referral marketing program, and we're going to do eight weeks starting the first Tuesday in March on referral marketing. So I'll do a session on that today so that we understand it. And I'm going to give you several case studies of uh, what I call advanced referral marketing, which are more joint ventures, which can be very powerful. Okay, so I just want you to understand that you have a roadmap in your hand, but you got to learn how to use those tools. Fair enough? Okay. Now, there's another sheet in there called My GPS. I want you to pull that out. And that's what we're going to focus on for the next little bit. This is a one thing training, it's a one thing philosophy. And this is Gary Keller's GPS. 
program. It's something that I've been using for a long time. I just haven't talked about very much, but I use it on a regular basis. When we have our team meetings, guess what we're looking at? GPS. So it's another tool that I want to introduce you to that just helps you get a lot of clarity. All right. And by the end of today, when we do, we're going to finish off today with a 90 day roadmap. And I want you to, to really understand what your GPS is moving forward. All right. Now, in Gary Keller's world, well, before we go to that, uh, who can tell me what my GPS stands for? Goals, plans, and systems. All right. Gary Keller's GPS goes like this. The goal, and that's your goal for the year. So that's your sales goal. All right. Or your uh, big overarching one thing for your business. It may not be a sales goal. In this case, it might be, uh, you know, building out your org chart. It might be developing your team, but you got to have some uh, some way of uh, verbally articulating what it is that you're after, what your one thing is. You have to make a habit of asking that question that we asked yesterday. How does the one thing question go? Close. What's the one thing I can do or we can do as a team? What's the one thing I or we can do such that by makes everything else either easier or unnecessary? If I get the KFP, if I'm not at KFP and I'm not making a profit, first of all, is that something you can do? Yes. Michael Killen did it. He's got more money in his, ba in his business account than he's ever had, more money in his personal account than he's ever had. But his one thing, and it took him almost a year because of his POS systems and, and the bookkeeper issue and things like that. Was it worth it for him? Yeah, because before that, he was taking money out of his savings account, which thank God he had, and funneling his business. And this is a business that does a few million dollars a year. If you're not at KFP and a business that's doing a few million dollars a year, you can hurt yourself pretty quick. All right. So his one thing was KFP. You got to stay focused on your one thing. What's the one thing we can do for our business such that by doing it, that's implementation, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary. Where do you get that? You get that from your assessment. You get that from your SWOT analysis. You get that from, from thinking about your business. You get that from coaching. How many people, I'm not even going to prompt you with one of these. I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand if you know that you know that you know what the one thing for your business is this year in 2019. We got some work to do. I need you to meet with your coach. I need you to round table it. I need you to ask me during the day. All right. Because there's a few key questions. Are you profitable? Do you have enough income coming in? We start there. Here's another question. What's your biggest challenge? And I know that sometimes we have many of them. I'm putting out fires every day. Okay. Where do you start? I'm making money. I got a team, but I'm doing all the work. So what does the one thing become? Right. Delegating, replacing yourself in one of those areas on, uh, on the org chart, or maybe even several this year. And then we have to chunk that down and say, okay, what's the first priority? Where am I spending most of my time that I shouldn't be in? When you look at that org chart, when you look at that org chart, there are areas that I shouldn't be in. 
I don't need to be in accounting because I'm not going to crunch those numbers very long. And I mean, it's just, you know, I love looking at the reports. That's not my strength. Which one of those boxes do you need to desperately get out of? That becomes your one thing. Now, your one thing will change for your business once you get that accomplished, right? Once I have my marketing plan, once I have the money coming in in the, in the area that I want it to come in and, and all that, then I can move to another one thing. It's not just one thing, it's one thing at a time. It's focusing on that big rock item in your business. All right, so here's how it works. Uh, GPS, this is from Gary Keller. Identify an annual goal. That's your 2019 goal. Number two, and remember, we're going to send you these slides. Complete the brain dump exercise. That's what Gary calls it. Ellen Rohr calls it the master projects list. If you'll notice, if you flip to the back of your simple dimple business plan, then there is a master projects list. This is where you capture your ideas. I have a notes file that's just called master projects notes file. And, you know, when I and it's all linked up between my my phone and my computer and all that. And uh, anytime I make an entry in there, I have an idea for, you know, something that we might want to do in our business or whatever. I just put it in there. And so there's this whole long list that when I do business planning, I can just I can just go start. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Let's do that. I have a manila file folder that. If I start thinking about ideas on my notebook, I can just rip those pages out and put it in that file folder. And that, that, that business planning folder is on my desk. My project folders are right there on my desk so that when I do my daily time capsule and I'm, I'm looking at my three priorities, my four projects, whatever you want to call it, it, during my daily time capsule, how can I take that project to the next level. What's the next step? Are y'all getting this little simple process? Okay. All right. So then you apply uh, Pareto, the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule by asking what question? The focusing question, which is? What's the one thing you still have your one thing handout from yesterday? Okay. Just pull that out, and one of the slides has the focusing question. Keep it in front of you. And then when you get a pair of scissors from Michelle on the break, cut it out and tape it on your computer, you know, tattoo it on your wrist or something so you can be like, okay. All right. What's the one thing? So you, you make a habit of asking the focus, focusing question. In Gary's system, if you'll notice on your sheet, you choose three priorities. It needs to be somewhere between one and five. Ellen does what she calls the top five projects. We do phenomenal four. Same thing. What are the three priorities? or priority points, he calls them. Then you're going to identify five strategies under each priority. Ask the focusing question to line up the dominoes, which is going to bring you down to the one thing that you need to be focused on now. Who's going to do that, and when does it need to be done? Simple? Okay. Does anyone want to give me their one thing and do an exor this exercise real quick together? Elise, what's your one thing? My one thing is that no project, no projects that we work on this year will, or all projects that we work on this year will have a profit, even if it's a dollar. All projects are profitable. What's the top priority, or the top, what's the top priority that would make that one thing possible? Uh, I guess make sure we're charging enough for each project. Okay, so our our priority one is to make sure that we're we're charging enough across the board. Is that what I just heard you say? Yeah, it's on a project by project basis. It is. It is. It's on a project okay. by project basis. Okay. So, what's the first priority in order to get that one thing? What's the one thing you can do to achieve that one thing? 
uh, look at past projects that we didn't um, yes. be profitable on and figure out why. Okay. All right. So priority one is to find out why we are not profitable. And so that's going to take some research. All right. Now, five strategies under that, under that priority. Strategy one, review all of our past projects. Strategy two. Uh, part of the mindset why people are telling us to lower our prices. So don't lower your prices. So okay. The team to not <coughs> I hear you. I hear you saying train the team on the value. What's another strategy we could employ here? Or, um, research on what other people are. Yes. What else? See, if we spend enough time asking good questions about this, we can line up those dominoes. Okay, so what's our value that we bring? Um, yes. That's part of the training, probably. Yeah. Or we okay. have to determine the value if we don't have it. Like, why? Why, yes. do, why do we deserve the... So one strategy might be changing how we communicate, how we communicate on the front end. Our marketing may come into that. And so you'll get a number of strategies. So let's say you have 20 strategies. Yes, sir. Yes, understanding your own value. And that comes through training and learning and research. We got to get the whole team involved in that. Now you take those. Let's say that you have a whole bunch of strategies. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the 80-20. What are the 20, what are the 20 percent of those strategies that are the most important, that are the most likely to get us there? You can't do all of them, so you pick five, five strategies. Then you take those five strategies and there's one that becomes your one thing. So maybe our first strategy, the most important one, is to start meeting with a team. Maybe the first one is to, to research the, pro the projects, all right? But I have them all listed, and then I share them with the team, and we go to work on those strategies. Okay, we're going to have training. We're going to get training from over here, and we're going to meet, and we're going to do training together. And then strategy two is, okay, we're going to let's, let's, let's assign someone, because uh, by who and by when, we're going to assign someone to, to look at all the projects and get them all organized so we can look at everything, right? And then you start digging down, and, oh, what happened was we didn't follow the procedure here. Whatever it is that you learn, right? Is this making sense? Okay. I think it'll make more sense with this slide. All right. So we have our um, someday goal. And that's your dream. You chunk that down to uh, five years. Where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be in a year? Where do you need to be this month? Where do you need to be this week? Or what are we working on this week? And what do I need to do daily? And what do I need to do right now? It's called goal setting to the now. Here's what it looks like. Here's what usually happens. You have your dream out there, where you want to be, your someday goal, and where you are today. This is why assessments are so important. And notice the red dot at the bottom of the screen. Did you reach the someday goal? No. You went all these different directions because you didn't have the dominoes lined up. You weren't focused enough. You're distracted over here, distracted over there, and you end up somewhere where you don't intend on ending up. You don't hit the someday goal. So this is what it needs to look like. What it needs to look like is I got my someday goal, five years, three years, 12 months, six months, this month, this week, today, right now. You got to take that and chunk it down to what's important now. What's the first step? It's hard because there's a lot of stuff to work on. But you're not going to be able to get focused until you go through this process. It's so important. Even if you miss it a little bit, is this better 
than just winging it? Yeah. You got to work on this stuff every day. Every day. All right. Then the question is, does your team chart or your org chart match the GPS? Understand that you represent the G or goal. Your priority positions could uh, represent a key hire to the team, department, head or manager or whatever. And completing your GPS and building your team to accomplish it is another law of success. You know, Gary Keller's one thing was when he started this whole process, he had a coaching session and he was looking at his someday goal, where he wanted to go and where he was now. And his one thing was he had to make 14 hires, 14 people. I have to find these 14 people. So he resigned as, uh, as uh, CEO, I guess it was, or COO, I don't remember. Whatever his position was, he resigned that position and said, my one thing is to find these people. And he found some phenomenal people. Remember that no one succeeds alone. If you want to reach your dream, you got to have a team. You have to empower that team. They have to have the gifts to do those things, to help you with those. Then what you're going to do is when you do your one thing time or your daily time capsule that we talk about in the uh, planner. Is you got to have a time block. You got to have a planning time block. That's your daily time capsule to get focused. Go back to the GPS. Go to your phenomenal four. That's what we call it. It's in the back of your your business plan, that's where you need to end up. These are my phenomenal four projects. Maybe it's building my referral marketing system. I was talking to, to Phil yesterday, and he's maxed out as far as he can see. He's in a small town in, uh, well, I don't know if it's a small town, but a smaller area in uh, the UK, and he feels like he has all the referral sources locked up. That's an accomplishment right there, right? Yeah. Okay, and so now what do I do? His priority has to be to go deeper with his existing accounts, which is what we're going to talk about this afternoon. How do you do joint ventures with those guys? How do you help them and go deeper with them, right? So that becomes my top project or my top priority in my Ziegler Planner where it says uh, the personal performance record where you line out your weeks, all right? You gotta be focused on the week. This is the priority today, and you work on that first. Then what you gotta do is you have to um, block your one thing time to work on your projects. Here's how it works. If it's a one time one thing, like you're working on an event, let's say, then you block off the appropriate hours and days to get that project done. If it's a regular thing, then you're going to block off the appropriate time every day so it becomes a habit. What's a, what's a good e example of that in business? You know, I'm going to get a very inspirational speaker to kick off our days from now on, and I'm going to do the 10 o'clock slot. Um, team, write that down. Get Mr. Rick Jones to kick us off next time. I'll take the 10 o'clock slot after everybody has coffee. <laughs> I love the fact that I can even just say that, you know. All right, how about this? If it hasn't become a habit for you and your company yet to monitor your daily sales goals, that would be an example of a daily habit. If that's important, and it is. If someone else is doing it for you, that's great. But if you haven't delegated that yet, because you want to track your sales daily, you track your P&L weekly, so there's a weekly habit, and you schedule it. Every Saturday morning, I check... I run the P&Ls for all of my companies, and I compare the same period this year from last year. And when you're on Ellen's program, you compare it to budget. You can literally run three columns. And to budget for the next year, 
I simply run my P&L and, and I uh, go through every line item and I just take a pen and say, okay, eh, I'm not doing that anymore. We, you know, spent, you know, $50,000 on Facebook and didn't get anything. No, we're not doing that. And then over here, a master projects list. Maybe I should get with Don, <laughs> you know? And uh, so you go through it line by line and see what worked and what didn't work. But the habit is every day you're running the, the sales reports. Every week you're looking at the P&L and the balance sheet and maybe comparing it to budget, okay? And um, then you look at how can I automate that? We have software, it's all automated. We just gotta look at the reports. We have software where the numbers are input by the, in our service company, input by the technicians. It automatically feeds up into QuickBooks Online, so we don't have to like close tickets and all that stuff. It's automated. So then you start looking for ways to automate that stuff. At some point, somebody has to do some input. But anyway, um, in your personal life, exercise, eating right, daily habits. Each and every day, ask the focusing question for your block time. All right, so... Uh, you block your one thing time and then protect your time blocking. Time blocking is not hard, but how many of you found out that protecting that daily time capsule time is? Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. So let's look at four proven ways to protect your time block. Number one, build a bunker. You need a fully functional workspace that's away from all the distractions. Gary Keller even uh, recommends that you put a coffee pot in there and snacks and restroom, everything that you're gonna need. Because what happens if you, know, you walk down the hallway? Got a minute, got a minute, hey, right? Okay. Hannah's like, yes! Okay, all right. Remember, one of the things that I ask you is, can you do your time block stuff, your number one priority at home before you go in, right? So you got to use some creative solutions sometimes. I didn't just figure this out. I mean, it's like, okay, I had to go to the office at 7.30 in the morning, get the guys out, and it's like, this is not, you know, morning time block, okay, that's, you got to get up early. I tried, okay, 10 o'clock, I'll go to Starbucks. And then there was this other distractions. That's why I finally settled on, this is when I do my daily time capsule. And this is when I go to the office. This is when I don't. This is when I'm there. This is when I'm not there. You time block everything. Everything. This is when I do sales calls. This is when I don't. This is when I spend time with the family. This is when I don't. Gary Keller, uh, they're in this big building in Austin, and when you pull up in front of that building, you walk in the front door, and nobody knows it except for Keller Williams employees, but there's a door right there with a little keypad. That's his office. There's a restroom in there, and he can do everything he needs to do, and he can get out to his car and get back in. Because the second that he goes down the hallway, especially as popular as he is, I mean, he's like a celebrity in the Keller Williams world. We were so blessed. Santiago talked about it. I took my team that we got uh, two full days with Gary Keller in a room like this. Ask any question that you want. He went through the 13 steps of building an empire. I have those slides. I took one of our leadership groups, our Monday group, through that. At one point, Thursday group will get to that and maybe do that program. It's awesome. And because uh, the first thing that's going to happen when he walks down the hall, hey, Gary, ask you a question. Oh, can we get a picture together? We got to get a picture with him. Like, I mean, he's in and out because it's not his priority. He's already a celebrity. He only needs to get pictures with people. You know what I mean? OK, number two, store your provisions, as we just said. Uh, sweep for minds, phones, emails, interruptions. <laughs> yeah. I love what uh, somebody said that they were going to do in here. Where's Doug? Doug and, um, I'm sorry, what's your name again? Angela, right. Said, when we're in our one thing time, he keeps my phone. When I'm in my one thing time, he goes in his one thing time. I keep his phone. I was like, brilliant. 
I love it. Lovely, as they say in the UK. All right. Uh, number four, enlist support for those who are most likely to seek you out. Who will that be? Your employees. Let them know what you're up to. Hey, teach them this stuff. This is why this is important. I need to be prepared for our meeting. I can't be in it all the time. I can't be dealing with the urgent all the time. Gary Keller has a three, three uh, foot rule. Your arms are about three feet. It's actually a six foot rule, but on either side and all around, like you control what gets into your space. You bet. V, I want you to send these slides out like ASAP when the event is over so that it'll be fresh and people who want to do what Deanna's doing tomorrow and go through, just, just make them into a PDF and send them out. Okay, you got to let your family in on this. You know, I mean, thing is, is that if you're not clear on that, you're sitting there working and you're in the flow and next thing, you know, somebody wants to come and chat for a while. And if you're a D like me, you're like, I do make a huge exception these days. And you guys can probably guess what it is. I don't care what I'm doing. <laughs> GG's awake. I'll take her. <laughs> That's my one thing. Okay. All right. This is really, really awesome right here. Number one, time block your time off. Schedule your vacation first. I had a consultant I was working with one time, and he had this little system, and it was called fun. You schedule your fun time first. I thought, that's cool. Because what happens when we don't have any fun? We don't have any time off. About 12 or 13 years ago, I just started taking one day a week off Sunday. I don't do any work. I don't do, I don't, I don't read a business article, read a business book, nothing relating to my business. Unless it's an emergency or something like that. I don't make any calls. I don't take any calls. And you know what? These last 13 years, I've been more productive than ever before. Because here's what happens. Stress builds up throughout the week. There's a reason that God works six days a week and then God rested on the seventh day. You think he needed to rest? No, that's there for us because he loves us. He cares about us. He knows that if you overdo it seven days a week, 24-7, you're going to kill yourself. And then there's always a trip. Before I owned a place in Destin, my routine was I'm going to be at the beach in Destin every quarter, period. First thing that went on my calendar. First thing that went on my calendar every quarter. And when I was all stressed out at work, I'm like, okay, um, I can get a little relief here by thinking about my vacation coming up, where I'm going to stay, da, 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 da. Number two, uh, time block your one thing. The one thing time means this is the time you need to, uh, to block off for your project. This might be like in, in Elisa's case, it might be to do that training with the team. It might be the time, block off the time to do that research. And then uh, time block your planning time, and that's what we call the daily time capsule. Every day, one hour a day to start with. All right? And that's what I do every day. I do a little time capsule, and then I have, uh, in fact, on my schedule, I don't put anything except for... Uh, Tuesday webcasts and some of the pods that I do, but nothing is on my schedule before one o'clock. And if I get an invitation to lunch, I'll go at 1130, be done by one so I can be on the phone. And the reason is, is that 
uh, by the afternoon, your willpower battery is drained. There are four thieves that will rob you of your productivity. Number one is the inability to say no. Why do we say yes to things? To please people. Where does that come from? The fear of re rejection. The fear of rejection. Number two, fear of chaos. If I'm not answering those text messages and emails and, and I'm not just like going slow enough to keep everything organized, then things can kind of get crazy around you, right? Number three is poor health habits. How many of you have had periods in your life that you were eating right and you had way more energy or you went on a plan and you had way more energy? Yeah, it's important. Number four, your environment doesn't support your goals. Number one, let's look at the inability to say no. One yes must be defended over time by a thousand no's. Not a priority. Hey, I need to meet with you. Here's my scheduling link. By the way, that's, I'm writing a book called uh, FTI this year. And one of the things to help you to implement more is, is automation. So I have a whole uh, section on automation. One of the things I do is I have a scheduling link. And so when people want to book an appointment with me, I don't go back for hours and days. Oh, Tuesday's not good. Well, how about Wednesday? And blah, blah, blah. No, I send them my scheduling link and say to make it more convenient and easier for both of us, just choose a, a time that's convenient for you on my scheduling link. And there are several programs that you can use. Scott, you use one of these, don't you? Calendly. Calendly. And I use Appointment Core, and it's connected with, um, you know, my calendar. You block out when you're going to be available. Again, time block for your phone calls and your meetings. And my meetings are from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Sometimes, that one back there, she books me up so much, she's like, Chief, you're not available till March. What can I say? I'm a busy guy. Okay? And so sometimes we have to, to work on that. But then what happens from there, I have to say, who do I need to start saying no to? Who can take some of these appointments? Am I taking? So one of the things I did, instead of having a 45-minute that uh, is actually 60 minutes on the calendar because you need a little time to regroup and check the emails in between, all that stuff. Um, some of these calls don't need 45 minutes. So now I have a 15-minute link and I have a 30-minute link. And I'm, I'm, I'm running interference for Tom Ziegler and you would not believe all the people that that want to talk to Ziegler about an opportunity like everybody I mean I never saw this but Tom told me that uh, years ago someone actually approached them because they had an idea for motivational cat food <laughs> Yeah. So I have to say no to a lot of people who want to do something with Ziggler. And so, you know, that gets on my calendar. And then I have to start asking myself the question, who else can say no? Who can who who is going to be the bad guy when I get through this cycle? Right. I'm always thinking about. How can I delegate that to someone else who can say no in the right way? And I have a person in mind. She knows how to say no very, very well. But she just needs a little, maybe a little coaching on how to say no in a nice way. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. Steve Jobs, when he came back to Apple, 
They had 350 products. And why did they bring Steve Jobs back? Focus. They were struggling. It wasn't working. Too many products, too many distractions. In two years, he narrowed it down to 10 products, and they became the largest company there for a little while in the entire world by focus. Number two, the fear of chaos. Untidiness, unrest, disarray, disorder. Uh, things just pile up. I'll make a confession to you. I don't file everything. I pay my bills online. It's time blocked. It takes about 15 minutes a month. Do it all at one time. And I throw that stuff in a basket. I keep it in case I need it. But all that stuff's available online. If somebody has a question, you know, keep it for three years, shred it and toss it. I'm not taking my time to file this stuff, and I'm not taking anybody else's time to file that stuff. Even my own business receipts, I save them. Don't tell anybody. I don't file them. If I get audited, I'll hire somebody, go through, sort them by date. They're, they're labeled, you know, I wrote on them, you know, whatever. And it's somebody else's problem. I don't delete emails. That takes too much time. That's not my problem. That's Gmail's problem. <laughs> Santi actually doesn't agree with that. He's like, no, that's our problem because whenever you run out of space, we have to take about two or three hours and, you know, go through and delete everything. I'm like, that's better than me taking 30 minutes a day to do it. Hey, I'm perspicacious on my email. I'm like, I ain't even going to open it. I'm not even going to take time to delete it. If I don't need it, I ignore it. If I need it, I star it. And I come back to it during the time block time. Okay, so be creative in aligning competing priorities. Right now, some of you have kids, right? And they get up in the morning. It's important. You got to build your business around that because there's no amount of success that can compensate for failure or difficulties at home. Gigi's important. She's not always awake. She's not always available. Okay, so pause. I'll take that distraction, right? Because I want her to know who she is, who she is, and that she got a papa that will always be available to her. Amen. Always. Amen, Amen brother. Gee, yes, sir. One, one thing, just to kind of go back. When you said to block, block your time off, time block your one thing, time block your planning. Yeah. Time block your one thing. That's, that's, that would be all of your projects. That yeah. You just don't, don't do the strategies. The, the, the planning, would, the strategies would come in the planning time, but the yes. time block for the one thing would be to define your priorities. Yeah. So that when you the, that would be the two, that would be the priorities. Yes. Go so ahead. in your in your uh, planning time and your daily time capsules, what we call it, and your one hour a day, you're thinking about your goals. You're going through. You're building your GPS. Once you're comfortable with your GPS and you understand what your priority is or your project, let's say it's getting to KFP. Okay, strategy one is get all the stuff that our CPA has, get all the data, find the data. Uh, number two, maybe we've got to do some, we got to get some paperwork that we have and you know, you, you line up the dominoes and I create that GPS, but then I'm gonna have to create time for somebody to go through there and you know start building that thing. I'm gonna probably have to schedule time to get on the Inner Circle website and go through Ellen's stuff. I may have to schedule time with Ellen and you know I may just have to like schedule a lot of time to understand it. But if it's truly the priority to get to my one thing, I gotta invest whatever it takes, the time and money and energy to make it happen. Because otherwise, it's not just going to happen, and I'm going to be stuck where I am. What if I stuck my head in the sand 
when I was in debt and played the, the victim. And I did do that for a long time until it's like, this, this is not going where it needs to go. Yes, ma'am. CPA firm, and one of their values is success and work is not worth failure at home. Amen. And I just thought that was so powerful that they actually made that a value so that all the employees know they done that the management does not want Absolutely. to their family life. Look, look at Chick-fil-A, closed on Sundays. Love that. And they're more successful than everybody that's open 24-7. Speaking of food, <laughs> you know, what if you reach your biggest financial goals and then you just have a massive heart attack or a stroke or whatever? How's that working? That's called the silent thief. I'll send you these uh, slides. You know what to do for your daily energy plan. Number four. Your environment doesn't support your goals. See, you have your one thing, and what's going to support you is the people, your team, your coach, your family. They need to understand your goals, and they'll support you. And then the place. You can't be in an environment that doesn't there's so many distractions that you can't get your work done michael gerber says your office should be six blocks uh, from your business you go down there to train and observe the systems now it might take you a while to get to where people are doing it but that's just that's an org chart function you know you start replacing yourself and one of the best ways to train people is to disappear Amen. 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 Yeah. Somebody, who was it was telling me yesterday that uh, that their employee was calling in. I was thinking it was Brant. Says employee was calling in because the owner that uh, he bought the business from was just like 24-7, right? And so after a couple of texts, he just put it on airplane mode. And guess what? 30 minutes later, when he checked his text messages on a break, they had figured it out. How many of you know that they'll figure it out if you don't always give them the answer? What's that? If you hire well. If you hire well, yes. All right. I'm going to close with this quote. And then I, I really want to do a very powerful exercise that takes about four minutes, but I'm afraid that you might fall asleep on me if you do it. But some of you might need a four minute nap. But before we do that, look at this. This is research. Individuals that don't write down their goals rarely, if ever, accomplish them. But individuals with written goals are 39.5% more likely to succeed. Listen, you came all the way over here. Don't leave here without writing down your top goal, your, your one thing, your top priority. Everything else, is, it's, it's here. It's in your file. It's, you know, but you got to focus on the most important thing, the one thing. Now watch this. Individuals with written goals and weekly accountability are 76.7% more likely to succeed. What do we call that? We call that pods. That we call that weekly pods. If you're not in a pod, maybe you're in a pod before and it, for whatever reason it wasn't for you. Maybe you didn't understand the process. Maybe we didn't facilitate well. I don't know. But what's the alternative? 
weekly accountability. We were talking about that yesterday. I have a very powerful exercise. It could be life changing. You want to do it now? And if you need coffee and you fall asleep, then hey, worst thing that happens, you got a four minute nap. Okay? All right. So I want each and every one of you to put everything down in front of you, especially your phones. And if your phone vibrates or, or rings or whatever, you probably already got that turned off. Get everything just cleared out. And I want you to close your eyes. Now, I want you to imagine that you are in the most beautiful place that you've ever seen in your life. You are truly sitting in paradise right now. The sky is blue. There's, there's not a cloud in the sky. The, the, the sun is out, but it's not too hot. It's just warm, and there's a little... A trade wind that blows across your warm skin. And the scenery is just spectacular. It's the most serene, beautiful, amazing view that you could possibly imagine. You're a total peace. You look behind you and you notice that there's a trail. And you're going to get up and you're going to walk down that trail. It's still beautiful outside. The leaves are rustling with the gentle wind. And you're walking along this path. Very peaceful. And then you notice that not too far in the distance... There's a, there's a hill, and you start up that hill. It's not a difficult climb at all. There's a few switchbacks going up this hill. And as you're going up this hill, you notice that there's someone at the top of this hill. And that person looks familiar to you but you can't place that person. But as you get closer, you realize that this person that's waiting for you is your future self. This is your future self 20 years from today. And I want you to have a conversation with this person. I want you to notice what this person looks like, their demeanor, the wisdom that they have for you. And I want you to ask them some questions. What happened over the last 20 years? How did we, how did we get here? What, what should I have been focused on? What, what should I have done over the last 20 years? What does life really mean? What is, what should my purpose have been? And I want you just to think about that conversation. What wisdom does your future self have for you? What would your future self say to you right now? What advice would your future self your older, wiser self give to you. Now, we're going to say so long. It's not goodbye because keep your eyes closed. It's not goodbye, it's so long. We'll meet up again. In fact, you can go back to this place anytime you want. 
say goodbye, say so long for now. Keep your eyes closed. Start making your way back down the hill, back down the trail. Back out to your beautiful place. And then I want you to sit there again in paradise. When you're ready, I want you to open your eyes and write down five things that your wiser, older self told you. The advice that your older, wiser self gave you. 